Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu, wa salamu ala rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome back to another production from Nadir Shubhat. I'm your brother Aqil. In our last video, we dealt with the lies. The lies that is purported against this conflict that's going on in Bilad the Philistine. The Palestinian land between the Palestinian people and occupiers of their land, the Israeli regime. And we said to be careful about the lies, especially in relation to what happened October 7th. And in this video, we want to look at the hypocrisy, the hypocrisy that takes place in the media and from the supporters of an oppressive regime like Israel. And we want to alarm you and awaken you to the clear and sinister double standards that we find Exposed right in front of our faces, the hypocrisy that people have the audacity to 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 broadcast right in front of our faces with no regards. So we mentioned that in the last video, the narrative that we received from the media or from the Israeli regime about what happened October seventh is not, in fact, factual, 100%. The false narratives, like 40 babies beheaded and Hamas burning alive Israeli babies and women and civilians, and all of these other atrocities that occurred on October 7th. We mentioned that there's testimony from witnesses, Israeli citizens, that in fact testify to the fact that the Israeli regime, the IDF, the military, when they finally encountered Hamas, were in fact responsible for a lot of the deaths of the Israeli citizens on this day. Sh tank shells was 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 uh, shot into residential houses where they thought Hamas was at, and killed not only Hamas insurgents but also Israeli citizens. But the death toll that occurred on this day was 100% attributed to Hamas. Why is that? So this is what we need to be aware of. And we discussed this in the last video about uh, the clear lies uh, told uh, of this conflict. So I will encourage you to view that video if you have not seen it. But in this sitting, we want to Discuss the hypocrisy. The hypocrisy of not only the narrative, but the support. And that we get from our news outlets, our, our journalists, quote unquote, uh, our governments, and the like. You have to, and this video is not the, the video for this, but you have to understand to some extent the history of what happened or was happening in Palestine. And even if we do a very brief perusal of the history for sure, since 1948 up until the present, when the Israeli state was established, and imposed upon already existing population 
of over 700,000 who was already present in the land. And you took their land and told them that we are actually creating an Israeli state in your land. Not even recognizing the sovereignty or the authority of the existing Palestinians in the land, you officially declared Israel as a state. And where does it leave the Palestinian people? With no state of their own. And when they resisted this imposition upon them, this occupation upon them, you fought them and you forced, even then in 1948, over a half million refugees out of uh, the land that you just labeled Israel, which was Palestine. And since that time, the Palestinian people have been trying to fight for the rights to live in their land as they did prior to this declaration that you imposed upon them in 1948. And since that time, the Israeli regime have been trying to annex all of the land in Palestine and take it all over for themselves. As is clear when you read the history and their intent in the first place, the goal is to get rid of all the Palestinians in this land and to make it 100% a land for the Jewish population, the Zionists. And there's a difference between the Zionists and the religious Jews. But this is for another discussion. <laughs> but since that time, what has occurred has indeed been nothing short of colonial occupation, a genocide, as you see from the declaration of the people who initiated this project to give Israel a state, an apartheid reality in which Israelis, no matter where you are, have automatic right to citizenship in Israel, but the very people of the land that was there before you that existed when this imposition occurred in 1948 don't have right to citizenship. And they have been oppressed and have been fighting for their right to exist in their land since that time. Quite interesting that you just come out from World War II after six million Jews were killed by Hitler and the Nazis to come into someone else's land and enact a very similar type of oppression and occupation and genocide against another people that you just cried about happened to you in Europe. And since that time, the Western world have watched and have not said a word supported Israel with no restrictions but this narrative is changing now this opinion is changing now because people are seeing the reality of the matter but still in front of our eyes still in front of our eyes <laughs> The, 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 the hypocrisy that occurs 
is astonishing. Let's look at some points before we close. And let's look at some points in what's relative to another situation that's similar to that. You have a war that's happening right now between Russia and the Ukraine. Russia invaded the Ukraine. It's their business. That's their neighboring countries and they have a conflict. That's their business. But America in being the moral mother of the world, seeing that this was oppressive and what was happening was not fair to the Ukrainian people. That what Russia was doing was in fact wrong. And they should not be invading their land and taking their land and occupying their land and killing their people and so forth and so on and so forth and so on. So America decided that we find this to be grave atrocity of what's happening to the Ukrainian people and we will help them. We will aid them. We will give them support and weapons to defend themselves and take a humanitarian approach to assist the people of Ukraine because of the oppression that's happening from Russia. America sided with Ukraine, the oppressed in their land. Yet, in the situation, the conflict, the matter as relates to Israel, America has sided against the oppressed, against the occupied, and sided and back the oppressor and the occupier, which is the Israeli regime, and give them financial aid, and give them humanitarian aid to Israel? You're sending humanitarian aid to the occupier? You're sending weapons and financial aid to the occupier to continue to oppress the occupied people? What hypocrisy have you shown the world? And you say nothing about what's happening, the genocide that's taking place, the apartheid state that's taking place in the land of the Palestines. When you look at these networks and these journalists, the likes of Pierce Morgan and the likes of the Israeli dog Ben Shapiro to come and spout this nonsense and support for this and support for that. Now, if someone wants, and I had a Palestinian friend of mine tell me he took his kid to school and he had a Palestinian flag and someone from the school called him and said, why do you do that? Why would you come here with a Palestinian flag? You know this is going to cause a problem. Why would it cause a problem? Why would it cause a problem? He's Palestinian. His child is Palestinian. And he wants to put a flag on his vehicle and drive. The same way Americans put flags on their vehicles. In the same way Jews put flags on their vehicles. But why is it a problem? with the Palestinians to show their support for their land when there's no problem for Jewish people to show support for their land? Why is Europe and, and, and places in Europe banning pro-Palestinian marches, peaceful pro-Palestinian marches, not pro-Hamas marches, not pro-terrorist marches, but pro-Palestinian marches? Palestinian people are being killed by the thousands at the press of one button. Bombs dropping on the heads of children and elderly and in hospitals where people are sick and need are going for, for, for medical attention because what's happening, you're bombing hospitals. And everyone is silent. But you're crying about what happened to the Israeli people. And no one undermines or discredits 
any atrocity that happened to any civilian Israeli citizen. We already dealt with this in previous videos. But how do you feel sympathy for Israeli citizens when something happens to them, but you feel no sympathy whatsoever for the Palestinian citizens when things happen to them tenfold? You cry about 1,400 Israeli citizens or Israeli lives that were snuffed out on October 7th. But you say not a damn word about over the 10,000 lives of Palestinians that have been bombed out since October 7th. The hypocrisy that we're witnessing is unbelievable and it's right in front of our eyes as if who cares? Who cares? We don't care to try to be uh, correct about this. We support Israel no matter what, and that's their posture. Free speech is okay only if in support of Israel. But if you condemn Israel, you're anti-Semitic. You're this. How is it out of anti-Semitic? Do you understand that Adams are also Semites? The Arabic language is a Semitic language? How would a Semite, how would a person from a Semitic language be anti-Semitic against his own background? But it's, it's a dog whistle that when you hear anyone talk against us, you have to condemn them. Don't say a word against the Jew, the Israeli, no condemnation. Why? Because we're the victims. You're the victim? You're the victim? When you have been entrusted into someone else's land for over 75 years and have been since then trying to eradicate this land to be exclusively for you and your people, when these people don't even have any citizens in any citizen rights they have no citizenship whatsoever in their own land and you're the victim you're the oppressed one you you're the one that needs billions of dollars from the american government for humanitarian aid for military aid when you have one of the strongest militaries on the face of the earth Against the people who have nothing. They're fighting you, the civilians, with rocks. And you're shooting them down with AK-47 rifles. The double standard, the hypocrisy that we see from people like in Congress, this woman... Rashida Tlaib, they want to censor her and ban her for coming out and talking against the Israeli regime. Yet, right-wing congressmen have declared openly and said openly to make Palestine like a parking lot, level it, do away with them. The likes of Lindsey Graham and all of these politicians who can come out and say whatever they want against the Palestinian people with no recourse or repercussions to them. Yet one person who's from Palestinian descent made a comment against what's happening, the reality of the matter, and you want to censor her. You want to remove her from Congress. The hypocrisy, the double standard that you people impose there's no Palestinian or pro-Palestinian marches but your government is sending all this money there the president of America this poor guy who, who needs to be retired somewhere was asked 
about a ceasefire. And he had the audacity to say, when they released the prisoners, then we'll talk about a ceasefire. And sending more aid and more weapons to Israel to continue to bomb out of existence the Palestinian land. Over 50% of the Palestinian infrastructure in Gaza has been depleted and bombed. And the number of 10,000 deaths is only for those people who have been accounted for. There's thousands more under the rubble of the bomb buildings, hospitals, schools, refugee camps that's in Gaza. How do these people come? before the media, before the world and acknowledge the right of Israel to continue to bomb and deplete a whole civilization, a whole nation and have nothing to say against the atrocities that we see happening from that. How does that happen? Pierce, Morse, Pierce Morgan continuously asks his guests how does Israel respond after such an atrocious attack against him? First and foremost, we need to identify exactly what happened against him and what was factual on the part of Hamas versus what's non-factual and what happened on the part of the IDF. But he had a guest on for the second time, an Egyptian. His name is Bassan Yusuf. And he asked him, how do you deal with this? And Bassan Yusuf gave a very potent answer. He said, if you have a patient and he comes to you and he has a virus, what do you do? And the, 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 the analogy is that ISIS is a virus within the Palestinian body. ISIS, I mean, sorry, Hamas. Hamas. And they, they, they attribute to ISIS, but it's not ISIS. But Hamas is a virus within the Palestinian body. And he said, you give this patient rest and liquids and nutrients to heal them. And then the body will get rid of the virus by itself. If you re 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 remove the occupation and oppression of the Palestinian people, the Palestinian people will be able themselves to rid out viruses, the likes of Hamas, that's causing a problem for them. But when you suffocate them and you continue to pound upon them, as he finishes his analogy, he said you don't beat them into surrender and think somehow that the virus is going to come out because of your continued oppression against it. Help the body fight the virus. Don't bomb the body in spite of the virus. And this is what's happening in Palestine with Hamas and the Palestinian people. But he gave this example. And this is how you deal with the matter. This is how you solve the problem. It's not by continuing to kill the Palestinian people and using as your scapegoat Hamas the terrorist organization. We got to get them. We got to rid them out. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to bomb this country until there's no more Hamas. Where's Hamas? You don't even know where Hamas is. You don't care where Hamas is. Because in your eyes, 
every Palestinian is Hamas to you. Your objective is not to get rid of Hamas. Your objective is to get rid of the Palestinian people from the land of Palestine so you can have it for yourself. And this has been declared by the people at the inception of establishing the Israeli state from the beginning. This is the reality of the matter. And what's unfolding now is just you're trying to expedite this process. So we need to create something that's so devastating and so atrocious and so disgusting in the eyes of people that we got the permission to do whatever we want to do against the Palestinian people. And no one will say anything. Yeah, we can go and side with Ukraine because we see them as being oppressed and being occupied by Russia. And we would give them humanitarian aid. But you give no aid. You give no assistance. You give no care for the Palestinian people. Why? Why the double standard? Why the hypocrisy? Why every single time when Pierce Morgan has a pro-Palestinian voice on his show, the first thing he asks him is, do you condemn October 7th? Pierce Morgan, why don't you begin your program with pro-Israeli voices with, do you condemn the Nekba of 1948? Do you condemn this? Do you condemn the thousands of lives that were snuffed out and lost and taken in the West Bank where there's no Hamas? Do you condemn that? Do you condemn the fact that is is in, in Israel indigenous Palestinian people who were there first has no rights to citizenship in their own country? Do you condemn that? Do you condemn indiscriminate collective damage, collective killing, collective punishment, even though it's against international law. Do you condemn that? Why don't you begin your interviews with pro-Israeli voices, with having them condemn all of the atrocities that have happened in the land of Palestine to the Palestinian people, people from 1948 up until the present day? Ask them, do they condemn that? Do you condemn, and even though he was fired by the prime minister, do you condemn people within the Israeli cabinet saying they should nuke the Palestinians? Do you condemn that? Do you condemn the bombing of refugee camps? Do you condemn the bombing of hospitals targeted? Schools. Do you condemn any of this? Begin with that question, Pierce Morgan. So I encourage us all to be mindful of the hypocrisy that takes place in this matter. <laughs> And call the people to account for the hypocrisy. That people are losing their jobs for their support of Palestinian people. But there's no problem for you to give your support for Israeli people, Israeli regime. And when you look at a lot of these pro-Palestinian marches and on demonstrations, many of them are led by many religious Jewish people who see and understand and oppose the Israeli regime. <laughs> Yet, their voices are being curtailed. That is not being aired. You don't see that on the media. You don't see the hundreds to thousands of Israeli citizens, religious Jews opposing the Israeli regime and its genocide that's perpetrated against the Palestinian people. You don't see that. All you see is these people labeling 
the pro-Palestinian marches as hate marches. And in closing, I want to say something about a phrase that is being used or misused against the Palestinian people to try and somehow indicate that the Palestinians are calling for genocide of the Israeli people when they say we want freedom for Palestine from the river to the sea. The intent of this phrase means that they want to see the Palestinians liberated in their land from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. They want people in Palestine to be free from the West Bank to Gaza. Because they're, they're imprisoned in the West Bank and they're in concentration camps in Gaza. And all of this was their land prior to the imposition of the Israeli state upon them in 1948. They were in this land. And now, since the Israeli state in 1948, they have been living under this condition. Expel over 500,000 Israelis, I mean, uh, uh, Palestinians, in fact, over 500,000 Palestinians, in fact, expelled and had to migrate, become refugees from Palestine in 1948. So freedom or free Palestine means exactly that. Free the people and give them the right of citizenship in their own land to be able to have their own state from the River Jordan all the way to the Mediterranean Sea, from the West Bank all the way to Gaza. Free them. Free them. And indeed, inshallah, soon that will be the case. Stay tuned because I have one more video in the series. I want to make an appeal to Ahl al Palestine, the people of Palestine, um, and to the Muslims. And I will be done with the series uh, this because it's uh, very emotional to sit and watch. Uh, the atrocity that, that continue and to have to say something about it, report it on it. Uh, so I said what I wanted to say here. I think I brought the points that I want to bring uh, for us to consider and to make um, evaluations of the matter and to be mindful of the propaganda. Uh, and inshallah, we will make a final video with an appeal to uh, Ahl Palestine and to the Muslims, uh, Amatan in general. And inshallah, uh, I think we will uh, conclude uh, on this matter, unless something major comes up and we need to um, bring it to your attention. But inshallah, uh, I think we will close close it that. wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam wa sallam. Subhanaka lahum wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ila al ant. Asakhfuruka wa tubu alaik. Wa salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.